In this series of videos, we're going to be talking about graphing nonlinear functions. So all the shapes that we talked about before, the uh, squaring function, the cubing function, square root, cube root, absolute value, we're going to be taking all these guys and we're going to talk about how do we graph them uh, without using any kind of graphing utility. So first things first, let's start off with this. When you see your function, f of x plus k. So it's like you have your main function, but there's something that's added outside of the function, something outside of the absolute value, outside of the square, outside of the cube root, whatever. This means that you have a vertical shift a vertical shift of k units. And so we're talking about this being outside the function. So let's do a couple of quick examples. Now, I'm not going for accuracy here. I'm just going for um, understand the concept. So let's look at f of x is equal to the absolute value of x plus 3. So let's talk about what we know. We know that because of this guy right here, this is an absolute value v-shape. Okay? It's the absolute value that tells you the shape. And then you have this plus 3 out here. And so this tells us that we're going to go up 3 units. It's outside the absolute value. It's a vertical shift, and we're going to do exactly what we see. It says plus 3. So you're going to take your v-shape and just going to move it up 3 units. That's all you have to do. So when you do a quick sketch of this, again, we're going to do more with accuracy here in just a moment. You're taking your v-shape and you're going up one, two, three units, and it's going to look something like that. And that's all there is. Now, again, we're going to be going for accuracy here in just a little bit, so make sure you stick around for that. If I say that f of x is equal to the square root of x minus 5, notice how the minus 5 is outside the realm of the square root. So, since it's outside, that means I'm going to shift vertically exactly what I see. So it means I'm going to take my square root function, I'm going to go down 5 units. But you have to make sure you understand what the square root shape is. So go back and reference your notes. The square root shape is this little half sideways parabola that looks something like that. So let's take that and let's do a quick sketch of this. So it means I'm going to take this and go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to start right here and do my little half sideways parabola. So it looks something like that. Okay? You just took that little half sideways parabola, you grabbed it, and you went down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you let go, and that's where it is. It's a lot like when you're dealing with stuff on a computer screen or your cell phone. You can grab things and you can just move it around. And that's what I'm doing. I'm grabbing this, grabbing, and sliding down. Let go, and that's where your picture is. All right, so that's when you have things on the, on the outside. You get that vertical shift. The other kind of shift or translation that we'll see is when it looks like this. f of x minus h. So now this is considered to be a change that's happening inside your function. So inside your squaring or your square root, inside your absolute value. So this, this right here means that you have a horizontal shift. And you have a horizontal shift of h units. So now you're going to be shifting things horizontally. Now we've mentioned this already when we talked about circles, but notice how there's a minus here in this form. Having a minus in that form means you're going to do the opposite of what you see. And we saw that when we had to identify the center for a circle. We might have seen certain numbers, but we had to do the opposite of those guys in order to accurately identify the, the center of your circle, to identify those coordinates. All right, so let's look at this. If I have f of x is equal to the quantity x plus 3 squared. One of the first things that you should notice here is that you've got a square. And a square 
means that I'm dealing with something that is a parabola. So that's my shape. Identify the shape. And then identify what you're doing to this shape. So with this plus 3, it's supposed to be a horizontal shift. But because of the minus in the way the form is given to us, we're always going to do the opposite of what we see in here. So that means I'm going to go not to the right 3, that would indicate a plus 3. I'm actually going to go to the left 3 units. So I'm going to take my parabola, and when I graph this, instead of it being right here going through the origin, I'm going to go to the left, one, two, three units. This is your key point, and then you would draw your parabola like that. That's what it means by having that plus three inside. And the thing is, it doesn't matter that it's the squaring function. If it were the absolute value function or the square root function, any of those guys, if they have a plus three inside, you're going to go to the left three units. Let's do this. g of x is equal to x minus two to the third power. So we've got that uh, something that's basically x to the third. So this is the cubing function. And remember the cubing function is what we call the cactus, right? He goes up on one side, he goes down on the other, like that. Well, what am I doing to this? How is this graph going to be different? By having a minus two on the inside, that's inside, I'm going to do the opposite of what I see. So I see a minus two, which makes me think left, but I actually need to go the other direction and go to the right two units. All right, so my sketch is going to go to the right one, two units. This is my key point, and then I draw my cubing function like that. Just shifted to the right two units. Okay? All right, so to help us out, to help us remember how we're supposed to deal with each part. We have this little acronym, IHOD over. So IHOD means that when you have something inside your function that is going to affect you in a horizontal way, but you're going to do the opposite of what you see. And D stands for domain. So if you shift things left and right, you have the potential to affect your domain from the original function. So inside, horizontal, change, opposite of what you see. Oh, when you have something that is outside your function, you're going to do a vertical change, exactly what you see, and this has the potential to affect your range. So in the last examples, we had things that were inside. They were horizontal, opposite of what I saw, and it could affect your domain. The first few examples we had, you had the change that was being done outside. It was a vertical shift, and you did exactly what you saw. So let's take these ideas, and let's apply them, apply them to some more complicated examples, and we're also going to go for accuracy. So make sure that you have graph paper. Make sure that you've printed some off, or you have your own graph paper, and let's plot and graph for accuracy.